We are in Siena for the Strada Bianca bike race. On the start list, 2022 winner Tade Pogaccia, our Team UA Emirates. Also 2023, last year's winner, Tom Pickock of Team Enios. But where are Matthew Vanderpool and Walt Van Art? Well, they're not here. We're gonna go down the whole start list, talk about the favorites and why those classic stars are skipping the bike race here in Siena. The bike race, over 200 kilometers this year, 71 kilometers of gravel and a lot of steep climbs out there. It's the riders race south from here in Siena. The steep climbs continue all the way till we get here in Siena with the final kicker before the riders get to Piazza del Campo and the finish here, a beautiful finish in the middle of Piazza del Campo where they hold the horse race twice a year. It'd be a perfect race for those classic riders, Vanderpool and Van Art, but they're not gonna be on the start line, unfortunately, in Siena. Visma Lisa bike, the team of Walt Van Art, well, they were ripping it last weekend at the opening classics weekend of Omlu Pet Newsblot and Kuhn Brussels Kuhn. It was Walt Van Art doing all the work out there, really punishing his rivals in Omloop, it was him along with Christoph Laporte and Matteo Jorgensen, the American, making the early winning move. And we thought that move was gonna stick to the line, but then the group behind came back up and in that move was John Tratnik. Well, Walt Van Art and the teammates let him go free and sit back and watch the others chase. And we saw Jan Tratnik, the Slovenian, celebrate in Omloop at Newsblad to underscore just how strong and how deep in talent is the team Visma Lisa bike. But the next day, don't you worry if you're a Van Art fan because it's Van Art igniting the climbs and going on the attack to beat out Tim Wellens in a sprint at Kuhn Brussels Kuhn. So you may be wondering, Van Art, why is he not here racing one week later? Well, hey, he's gonna back off because his big objectives are later on in the season. The Tour of Flanders and Paris Bay races he still wants to add to his resume, the big monuments. He's won these other races and he wants to focus on those races, so he's tweaking his schedule a little bit. In the past years, he skipped the opening weekend to see if that'd make a difference for those races. Well, this time around, he's skipping Strada Bianca and doing a, a modified program, also skipping Milan San Remo, races he won both in 2020. You remember Walt Van Aert, he had the cramps back there and on the climb coming into town in 2018, came back two years later, won the race here, Strada Bianca in 2020. Well, he went on and also won Milano San Remo that year as well. It was a great time for him, but he wants to win the Tour of Flanders at Peru Bay. So he's having to mess about with this program to fine tune it just right. He said last year he thought there was something a little bit extra he could have done to be ready. So he's down on the Spanish island of Tenerife off the west coast of Africa, training at altitude there on the volcano to make sure everything's going perfectly when he lines up in the Tour of Flanders. His next race, where we'll see him back in action, is going to be E3. He's racing E3, get well, Wilgem, then on to Dwarves Van Vlanderen, Tour of Flanders, and Peru Bay. We're going to see him there bashing it out and trying to add those races to his resume if he can pull it off. And in fact, Walt Van Aert posted on Estrava a ride of 89 kilometers from Tenerife, titled it Joe Mo, the joy of missing out. And I think he's referring to this race and Milan San Remo. So he's not at home crying at all, but I'm sure he'll be watching the streaming there from Tenerife of this race. Visma Lisa bike, not only with Walt Van Aert did they have a great weekend last weekend, but it was also with Jonas Vingago winning Grand Camino. Well, Jonas is gonna have to do without Walt Van Aert at the Tour de France, because you remember Walt Van Aert is really modifying his schedule for 2024. It's not just certain races like Strada Bianca is missing, but he's gonna skip the Tour de France. Instead, he's gonna focus on the Giro d'Italia. So don't worry if you're an Italian fan because he's gonna be spending plenty of time here in Italy, three weeks in fact, at the Giro d'Italia when it kicks off in Torino and finishes in Rome later in May. So Walt Van Aert, that's his plan to try to get those classics 
the Tour of Flanders and Paris-Roubaix to add those to his resume. Now we're going to talk about Matthew Vanderpool, what he's going to do. But before we get to him, let's talk about the team Visma Lisa Bike has here in Siena to race this event. It's Sepp Kuss. Sepp Kuss has already raced on the gravel earlier this year in the Classic at High End. I think there he finished uh, sixth and then he raced in Argov and he finished eighth place overall. So he's going well. He's not typically a rider for the one day classics, but these gravel type races sue him. He's a former mountain biker and the team's giving him more opportunities, especially after he won the Vuelta España last year. The team won all three Grand Tours, the Giro, the Tour de France, and the Vuelta with Sepp Kuss. So he comes in here as one of the leaders, and I think he should be the leader of the team, along with European champion, you'll see him in the white and blue jersey, the Frenchman, Christophe Laporte. Those two will lead the Visma Lisa bike team, but definitely we can say they're leaving their heavy artillery at home, resting those guys, getting them at altitude camps, everything they need to do to get them ready for the bigger classics up in the north. Visma Lisa bike is coming in here with Kuss and Laporte, and if we're talking about Alpecin de Kunic, Matthew Vanderpool, well, he is the 2021 winner here in Strada Bianca. He's already won this race, and he's already won the Tour of Flanders and Paris Roubaix, but he's doing things a bit different for different reasons. He's skipping races like Wolf Van Art, but for various reasons other than wanting to be ready for Flanders and Roubaix. Of course, he wants to be ready for those races but he's had a big off season. You would have seen him racing all those cyclocross races. And of course, at the beginning of February, winning the world championship title there in the Czech Republic for, I don't know, like the 100th time, Matthew Vanderpool becoming world champion in cyclocross. Vanderpool too, like Van Art, is also doing altitude training, but he's not down there in Tenerife. He's in Denia on the Costa Blanca there on the east coast of Spain. His altitude training while well, he's sleeping at night and resting in an altitude tent and doing his miles out there on the roads in Spain. So he hasn't yet started his road season. He's going to do that in two weeks time at Milan San Remo. And another reason he's modifying his schedule is because he's got the Paris Olympics later in the summer. He's racing the mountain bike event there. So he needs to really pinpoint which races he's gonna target so he doesn't spend too much energy. He's gonna parachute into these specific races. Milan San Remo, after that, we'll see him on a similar schedule to Walt Van Aert up there at E3, Ghent, Wevelgem, Flanders, and Roubaix. Alpes and de Kunic, they don't really have a super team here on the start line without Matthew Vanderpool, so they're gonna to have to make do without. Pogacar, yes, he will be the number one favorite when we line up, although the race number one of defending champion, it's gonna be on the back of Tom Pitcock, but Pogacar, why are we calling him the favorite for the race on Saturday? Well, it's because he's so dynamic, so explosive, having won the race here in the past and also dominating one day races last year like Flanders, Amsdell, Flesch, and also Lombardia at the end of the year. In fact, Il Lombardia was the last official race for Pogacar of the 2023 season, and this will be his first of 2024, but he does well over the gravel. He loves the stuff, and he was out reconning it in the last couple of days. But it's not also Pogacar, the team is power packed, UAE Team Emirates. So he has the guys to support him for the victory. And if he can't pull it off, perhaps he can set back and let one of his teammates do it like we saw on Omloop with Team Visa, Lisa Bike. Because in his team, we have Tim Wellens, who was going well in the opening weekend as well. You'll remember he went head to head with Walt Van Aert and Kuhn Brussels Kuhn. He also was instrumental in seeing things come back together, unfortunately, for Matteo Jorgensen and Omloop the day before. Tim Wellens is in there. Also, Mark Hershey, the Swiss, who's already won a race early on in this 2024 season, also on the start list, who's gonna be getting a lot of experience out here on the roads, and we already saw a win a stage in the Tour Down Under. Well, it's Mexican, new Mexican rising star, Isaac Del Toro will be in the UAE team, Emirates team, when they line up here in Siena. What about Tom Pitcock? Well, I didn't call him the outright favor. That title goes over to Tade Pogacar, even though it's his first race. Tom Pitcock has already been racing. And in fact, we would have seen him there in Omloop. He was riding quite well. He was in that important move of six riders, seven riders, then six. Unfortunately, at times you could see he didn't quite have the energy to follow those other riders. Visma Lisa bike was really hammering him and the other riders that was in that group, including Tom Skewens, who we'll get to of Team Lidl Trek. 
Tom Pitcock, though, I think is on the up and up, so you do want to keep an eye on him. He is excited to be starting this race. He said he said he doesn't feel any pressure as the defending champion with the one on his back. He's just happy to get out there racing, and he loves the gravel racing. He's racing the mountain bike event also in Paris against Matthew Vanderpool later on this summer. Tom Pitcock, well, I think he'll be the number two favorite out there in Strada Bianche on Saturday. His team is a pretty strong team. It includes Mikhail Kiwakowski, two-time winner in Strada Bianche. Also on the team is former Giro d'Italia winner Garrett Thomas and American Magnus Sheffield. He just re-upped his contract. So Ineos will be a strong force to reckon with out there on the roads. Also another team who I think is really a strong team Maybe flying under the radar here is Bora Hansgrohe, which we think will be later rebranded Red Bull for the Tour de France. Bora Hansgrohe has a power pack team, all guys that might not be top star riders that you uh, would, wouldn't recognize there. Some of the names, not key names, but one of the riders I think you want to look out for is Danny Martinez, the Colombian, won two stages in Argave, the race overall that Remco Evenepoel won. He finished second overall in that race and nearly dethroned Evenepoel there coming in for the final stage. Danny Martinez will be leading up the Bora Hansgrohe team. Now let's talk about EF Education. Another American besides Magnus Sheffield we want to keep an eye on is Nielsen Pallas who's just improving all the time in one-day races. We saw that in Flanders a few years ago at the World Championships. We saw it last year at the Tour of Flanders. The rider will be riding in the pink colors of EF Education Easy Post, and in the team, it's a pretty strong team. Also another up-and-coming rider. We saw it perform so well last year in the Classics in the Ardennes. Ben Healy, the Irish rider, he'll be riding right there, shotgun with Nielsen Pallas. Also, we have Richard Carpass, former Giro d'Italia winner and a home rider here from Tuscany, Alberto Bettiol, former Flanders winner. He'll be shepherding those guys out there on the gravel roads. He'll know every twist and turn. Team Israel Premier Tech. Now, they're probably not gonna go out and win the race, but you do wanna keep an eye out for certain riders. One is the Australian Simon Clark, who's ridden well here in the past. A cagey old veteran, we can call him. Not too old, sorry, Simon so experienced out there on the roads and he's going to be sharing that experience with a rider at the other end of the age spectrum riley sheehan yeah first year pro with israel premier tech the american from colorado i think correct me if i'm wrong down in the comments the american from colorado won perry tour last year as a stagiaire trainer trainee for the team they signed him they got him on a full contract for a couple years i think He's going to be here racing in Italy alongside Simon Clark, the Australian, learning so much. And the other riders there at Israel Premier Tech, the team Alito Trek. I mentioned them earlier. Tom Skewens was in that move in Omloop Pet Newsblot, looking so strong, perhaps showing too strong. Perhaps he should have hid a little bit. Perhaps he should be flying under the radar and then attacking, following the moves when they go at the right moment. And maybe he'll do that here in Strada Bianca because he was looking so strong in Omloop for Lidl Trek, and he'll be here on the start line. Also in the team, another American we want to watch out for, an absolute beast when it comes to these sort of gravel rough conditions, it's Quinn Simmons. The only thing that might work against Quinn Simmons, who's been out here training in the last few days, I've seen him out there with his dad out there on the gravel road, just loving it. The only thing that might work against Quinn Simmons, well, he's a bit of a bigger rider with all those short, punchy climbs. They could work against him. Perhaps he'll be working to help out Tom Skewens for the race victory. Then we're gonna go further down. Let's talk about some Belgian teams. Team Lotto Destiny, that team has the rider that is on the top of our minds because we saw him in the UAE Tour win the overall with that stunning stage victory to clinch the overall on the final day. Lenny Van Etvelt, the young Belgian rider is gonna be leading the team here. We don't know if he can win the race, but he sure looks impressive. And he's going to be on a high after his overall victory, his biggest ever win, UAE Tour and a World Tour race there. And now he's here lining up in Strade Bianche. Another Belgian team, Sudal Quickstep. It used to be the Classics great team, and it's not at that level anymore. Now we look to Alpecin and more so Jumbo Visma, now called Visma Lisa Bike. In the team is a former 2019 winner of Strade Bianche and former world champion twice, Julien Alaphilippe. The Frenchman's not had the best of luck in recent years. Also in the team is Tour Flanders winner, the Danish rider Casper Asgren, 
Both of those riders were involved in a crash in Omloop Pet News Blot, so we're gonna have to see how they're coming out. The team could surely use some victories, and so maybe here they'll make up for it. So keep an eye out on those guys. Magnus Court, the Danish rider, now with the Norwegian super team Uno X. Such an exciting team in red and yellow. That team is gonna be one to keep an eye on. Also Magnus Court, who's just an absolute baller, especially in the conditions that we're expecting here in Strada Bianca. And finally, former Milano San Remo winner, Matej Morhich. Even with Walt Van Aert, Matthew Vanderpool skipping the race, we still have Pogacar, still have Pitcock, and plenty of other riders on the start line. We have these crazy conditions, we have the gravel, and we're sure to have a classic Strada Bianca.